Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for July 28th of 2023. Well, it is titled Young Stars Stellar Jets. So what do we see here? Well, here we see another image from the James Webb Space Telescope. And we can identify that by the very distinctive diffraction pattern going through all of the bright stars and point sources within this image. So that very distinct pattern is associated with the optical system of the Webb Space Telescope. What we're looking at here is where a pair of actually a pair of young stars are forming towards the center of this image right within the central portions of the nebula that is seen. And then we see the jets of material coming out. Now normally stars are not associated with jets of material something like our sun or other ordinary stars do not have this. However, there are a couple of cases where we do see jets of material being expelled from stars. One is when we have a compact star such as a white dwarf or neutron star, which is accreting matter and will expel it perpendicular to that that accretion disk in a pair of jets. Another time this occurs is when young stars are forming and that's what we actually see here. We're looking at very young stars just in the process of formation and in, the end, in those very early stages we can also find jets of material. Now what this object is cataloged is as a herbig Aro object and it is caused by the herbig Aro object itself is not the star but is actually the illumination of the nebula. So where the jets of material strike the nebula and cause it to glow even stronger, that is what is classified as the herbig Aro object. And these jets are extremely long, extending out a light year and then crashing into this material at very, very high speeds. And that is how they energize material within the interstellar medium. So some of the material around this star. And that allows us to see them much better. It actually illuminates the jets much better than it otherwise would. The jets would be very hard to see if we were just looking for the jets. But when they illuminate the remaining material, it makes them uh, come out better. Now, why study this with the James Webb Space Telescope? Well, this telescope works primarily in the infrared portion of the spectrum. Its detectors are sensitive to longer wavelength visible light like orange and red, but are primarily sensitive out into the infrared, allowing views that cannot be obtained with ordinary telescopes. That's because the longer wavelengths are better able to penetrate the dust around a material like this around young forming stars and give us a peek into that interior your region where they are forming. So we get a view inside that we could not get with something like the Hubble Space Telescope or other visible telescopes on Earth because the dust is very good at absorbing the shorter wavelengths of light. So while visible light might be blocked by the dust, infrared light longer wavelengths penetrate and allow us a view in and a better study of these very young stars forming and hopefully give us a better understanding of how their jets are forming and the entire process that is occurring. So that was our picture of the day for July 28th of 2023. It was titled Young Stars Stellar Jets. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.